Hey everyone, I'm Jean and I wanna know, what's your absolute least favorite chore to do? Is it the laundry, taking out the trash, cleaning up the kitchen? I mean, what's the one chore the adults in your house ask you to do that you just cannot stand? Think about it for a second. Do you have it in mind? Well, for me, when I was growing up in middle school, my parents actually made me like wake up two hours before school actually started to like wash fruits and vegetables to put in this cold press to make like this vegetable fruit juice concoction that we drank literally every day that eventually my hands turned orange because of all the carrots that I had been drinking. And it was my least favorite chore to do. Now, let me ask you this. Does serving other people ever feel like that to you? When we say serving, it means seeing a need that someone else has and doing something to help them. We talk a lot about serving here at church. And while serving probably sounds like a good idea, if we're honest, it's a part of this whole faith thing that isn't always easy. Because serving others is such a big part of the way we talk about and put our faith into action. I asked my students about it and they had some awesome things to say. Check out what Jaden, Asael, and Ellie had to say when I asked them what serving means. Service means helping others, trusting in God, teamwork, and having faith. Service means taking care of your community. Service means to me to help other people in need with the things that God has given me and to maybe encourage other people to do the same. Those are some great thoughts about what serving is. And what about when you think about some big problems in the world? The difficulties you see in the lives of people you know or the major needs in your community? What are some of the things you notice in the world around you that make you think serving would help? Well, here's what they all said. When I look around me, I notice homeless people. And I, and I think they should have more food, more shelter, and more money. So I think we should donate to, more to the charity. When I look around in my community, I see trash where it doesn't belong. I can provide a service by picking up the trash. When I look around, I see people who have needs. Some of these needs are at homeless shelters or other sanctuaries. Serving can really help all of these causes. I totally agree. Or what about ways you might help or serve someone else? The things you could do in a typical day in your life. Jaden, Asael, and Ellie came up with some really great ideas. You could start a community group that picks up trash on a weekly basis. One thing you could do to serve is volunteer or help out for a special event or just a charity. It doesn't have to be anything big. You can just do your part to make a difference. You could help a friend at school when they're hurt. When one of my friends is hurt, I go over and check on them. And if he or she is hurt, I'll go tell the teacher and go take them to the nurse. Those are awesome. And maybe you've got even more ideas because serving is something you already love to do. You see needs around you and you're the first one to step up and do something about them. You help others alongside your family or friends or your group. Maybe you're part of a school club that helps people in need or you're part of a team that regularly serves your community. Or maybe you take care of your elderly neighbor's yard or tutor younger kids in math. However you do it, serving others is a big part of your life. It's something you're passionate about. But for many of us, well, it's one thing to brainstorm ideas and say them out loud, but actually stepping out to do those things, that's not always so easy. Sometimes serving others can feel more like a chore. It doesn't always come naturally to us. We don't always think about doing simple things like cleaning up after ourselves around the house or picking up trash when we see it or offering to let someone new sit with us at lunch. And that's just the everyday stuff we can do. Things get even more complicated when we think about all the really big problems in the world. I mean, do you know how to fix things like homelessness, bullying, or the need for like clean water? I sure don't. We all know that there are people in need whether they're halfway around the world or just right down the street, or maybe even in our own homes. Our trouble with serving isn't that we don't know there are people out there who could use our help. The problem is that for most of us, it stops there. We see a need or know it exists, but we don't always take the next step to help. Why is that? Well, I think a lot of us think things like, well, someone else can help them, or I'm too young to really help. There's nothing I can really do. I don't have the time or money or skills to really do anything to make a difference. I've got so many of my own problems to deal with. And believe me, I get it. I've thought a few of those things when it comes to serving other people. But what if I told you there was more to it than that? What if serving others wasn't just about the needs of the people you're helping? What if it actually has a lot to do with you 
and with me too. In fact, what if serving others can actually help you grow your faith? To give an example of how serving can change your faith, I wanna start with Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate example of our faith and knowing Jesus changes everything. The more we know about and learn from Jesus, the more our understanding of serving others might change too. Jesus' followers passionately told people about all the things Jesus taught and did. And the people listening would write down these things so they'd never be forgotten. One of the guys who wrote down what he was told about Jesus' words and actions was a guy named John Mark, who was often just called Mark. As we read what was happening at that time, we find Jesus doing what he often did, teaching lots and lots of people. See, Jesus had been traveling, speaking, and healing a lot of people, which means everybody was talking about him. Jesus was the guy everyone wanted to be around all the time, and he had to come back to the village that was the home base for his ministry in Galilee. The house Jesus was teaching in this particular day had so many visitors. I mean, there was absolutely no room for more people. In fact, Mark wrote that the room was so packed, there were people actually spilling out of the doorways. Check out what happens next. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Wait, what? Four random guys, they dug a hole in the roof of the place where Jesus was teaching and dropped their friend through it? Who does that? Can you imagine this happening to your house? Imagine that you're hanging out with your friends or family in your house, you're playing Roblox or making dinner, scrolling through TikTok. Then all of a sudden, the dust of, on your ceiling like starts to fall all over your head. You look up and there's hands digging up through the ceiling of your roof and some random guy is being lowered down into your living room. Like, it sounds kind of like a scary movie, doesn't it? I mean, these are the wild things that happened to Jesus everywhere he went. People would do anything just to get close to him because there was something about knowing Jesus Jesus that seemed to change things for people. And in this case, these guys wanted their friend who was paralyzed to be healed by Jesus. Can we talk for a minute about these four guys? Well, they seemed a little out there just digging holes through people's roofs. They also seemed like really good people. They were people who saw someone in need and did literally whatever it took to help them. Maybe you've recognized the need and wanted to do something like the four guys did in this situation. I know I have. Maybe you've wanted to give money to a person who was homeless on the sidewalk. Or maybe you've seen someone crying at their locker and wished you could help. Or maybe you heard about a family in your community who needed new clothes and wanted to give them some of your own. You saw a need and felt like God was maybe even asking you to step up to help. When you sense that someone is in need and you want to do something to help, that's called compassion. And it's that compassion that Jesus always demonstrated and challenged others to show too. These four guys noticed the man who was paralyzed and needed to be healed. They had compassion for him and wanted to help. And the way Jesus responded encouraged everyone watching to let that compassion motivate them to act and help people in need around them. Are you curious to know how Jesus responded once this guide was lowered on a mat in front of him? Check this out. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Now, if I'd been one of the four guys who dug a hole in that mud roof and lowered the paralyzed guy down, I'm not sure I really believe he could be healed. I'd wanna try and help him, but I think I'd still be extremely shocked when Jesus said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And then the paralyzed man did exactly that. Like what? That's even more shocking than the roof digging. As surprising as that might seem, remember, knowing Jesus changes everything. And that means that even what seems impossible can suddenly become possible when Jesus is involved. These four guys may not have known how Jesus would heal the man on the mat, but one thing they did know is that they could trust Jesus. Everybody in town was talking about Jesus. Everywhere Jesus went, this huge crowd would surround him. 
Why? Because he was saying things they had never heard before and doing things that they had never thought was possible. So even though they didn't know how Jesus would heal this man, they trusted Jesus enough to pick up their friend on this mat and carry him to Jesus. Because these men, they chose to serve their friend in this way. And because Jesus healed him, the onlookers who were watching were amazed. They'd never seen anything like this before and their faith grew. But while we know how the onlookers responded, I really wish we knew exactly what happened to those four guys after Jesus healed their friend. If I'd seen Jesus help my friend in this way, I can imagine that my faith would have totally grown in a huge way. Just like the story we just read. What's amazing about serving others is that when we do, we get a chance to experience God working in our lives and in others' lives. Through the process of serving, we learn more about God and what God wants for the world. And that is what can grow our faith. Serving can grow your faith. It's what probably happened for these four guys here. And it's what can happen for us when we make the decision to step out and serve others. See, Jesus didn't look at us and think we aren't ready or don't have what it takes or are too busy to help. Jesus wants to use us to help meet the needs of others. He wants us to serve. And in the process, he wants to see our faith grow too. Because serving can grow your faith. I know a student, his name is Carter, and he every summer will like go around our neighborhood and mow our neighbor's yards because he wants to raise money to, to be able to go on a summer trip that helps families that have kids with special needs. And, and he just learns and grows and comes back from these trips so transformed and changed. It's absolutely amazing. And just like Carter, God is also calling you to do something with the compassion you might feel when you see a need. God is calling you to offer what you have to help. We're all called to serve. And in the process, not only will we begin to help other people, we'll begin to help our own faith grow too. So if serving can grow your faith, Consider asking yourself a few questions this week. One, what do I see? What needs do you see in the world around you? In your own family, at your school, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your church? Are there people you know who need help? Have you read about an issue online or at school that really made you want to help? Start by looking around to see the needs around you this week. Second, what do I have to give? Maybe it's a little time to volunteer at a local organization. Maybe it's some extra money to donate to a cause. Maybe it's friendship with someone at your school who needs it. Whatever it is, start by identifying just one thing you have to offer to help meet a need you see. Think about what you can offer to serve someone else. Third, what do I plan to do? Remember, we don't just want to be people who see the need to serve, but don't take the action. So once you see a need and know what you have to offer, make a plan to actually do it. Think of just one way you can use what you have to meet the needs this week then actually meet it. Finally, what does this mean? Serving gives us an incredible opportunity to learn more about what God wants for the world and everyone in it. As you serve, think about where you see God working through you and through others. Pay attention to how God impacts you and the people you're serving in a positive way. Then ask yourself how serving helped you understand God better. Use the opportunity to grow your faith. If you're not exactly sure what some of this looks like for you, a great place to begin is by talking it over in your group. Together, you can encourage each other to see the needs around you, to point out what you have to offer, and make a plan to respond to those needs by serving together. There's power in working together to make a difference in the world. And there's something incredible about taking steps to connect the dots and grow in your faith together. So that's what I hope you'll do today as you move to group. Remember, Serving can grow our faith. When we serve others, not only are we helping to meet a need around us, but God uses that as a chance to grow our faith as well. All right, friends, I've got some more chores I need to do today.